Welcome back to the Ranking of Naruto Games! The show where we play and rank every Naruto game that came out in the West. And I was not looking forward to today. As you might know, I finish every Naruto game before I rank them. And I'm not doing it in chronological order, but it would be very weird to rank, let's say, Clash of Ninja 2 before ranking Clash of Ninja 1. So when it comes to a series, I like to do it in order. And you guys, you really want to see one game in this ranking, and that's Ultimate Ninja Impact. But there's one final obstacle, there's one final game standing between between me and Impact in the Ultima Ninja series. And that obstacle is called Ultima Ninja 6. Wait, what? Ultima Ninja 6? I'm not joking. But this game is the biggest clickbait I have ever seen. There's a reason why you haven't heard of Ultima Ninja 6. And along with that, I'm ranking another game in the Ninja Council series. So I wasn't super excited for this episode, but then the Ninja Council game was actually good. This is the best surprise I've ever had in this entire show. Naruto Shippuden Shinobi Rumble is listed as a part of the Ninja Council series. And judging by the soundtrack and the sprite work, I can see why, but that's where the similarities end. This is no longer a side-scrolling brawler, this is now a fighting game, or a platform fighter, and you know what? It's a pretty good one at that. The game has a light and a strong attack, but the strong attack changes with directions, and that gives characters a launcher that they can follow up with an air combo, a side launcher that throws the opponent into a corner, and the down strong attack is usually some unique attack for the character like Jiraiya's Needle Jizo. Hitting someone with a jumping attack usually gives you a ground bounce too, which you can combo from. And there are a few systems in place to prevent loops and infinite combos. So even though there's a very free-form combo structure that's actually super beginner-friendly as well, there are systems in place to prevent it from being broken, and it feels awesome. On the touch screen, each character has three special moves. Tapping the text does the special move fast, and you can even implement the jutsu into combos. And then if you tap the ultra button, the screen stops, and that special becomes a super. Once you have three bars, you can also activate Chakrush, which is a mode in which your character armors through everything, and you can spam super until you run out of meter. This is pretty much how you beat the hardest CPU fights, but in a real match you can actually use your mobility to get away from them and time waste a bit. Movement wise you have a double jump, you can air dash, so you can totally instant air dash like an anime fighter, so even that part of the game feels good. But you might be thinking combos in a Naruto game? Can't the opponent just spam substitution and get out of it? No. In this game substitutions are not a combo breaker, they are a tech tool. When you're knocked down you can substitute to get out of wake up pressure, and in neutral you can teleport around the the cost of some meter. That's it. No combo breakers. I was not expecting a ninja council game to turn into a fighting game and a good one on top of that. This was the best surprise I've had in this entire series. I wish there was a way to play this game in multiplayer in a way that was more accessible than you know, having two Nintendo DS's with two copies of the game and having the other person right next to me so we can play via wireless connection. Multiplayer on DS always feels like a hassle, I, I wish this game was on some other platform. The game has a few modes, story mode starts after the Kakuzu fight and ends in the epic battle between Sasuke and Itachi, going through Jiraiya's death as well, so it's an interesting arc. Story mode features 1v1 fights, but since this fighting system supports up to 4 characters on stage, it varies the amount of characters and team compositions, sometimes it's a 2v1 one, sometimes it's a 2v2, sometimes it's a 3v1 or a 4 player free for all, something that you can also replicate in versus mode. Story mode is kinda short, but by the end of it the game gives you a summoning sign, which is this symbol right here. Once you replicate that symbol in the summoning menu, it unlocks Itachi, and that's how you unlock characters and stages in this game. To get the other symbols, you gotta pick a character in personal battle and go through a series of 10 battles, sort of like an arcade mode. Or you could just look up the symbols online and unlock everything in 5 minutes. And I love that about this. It's a fighting game. Some people just want to practice and they want to fight, so giving them the option to not have to go through hours of arcade mode to unlock every character is a great way to do unlockables in a fighting game. The roster size is very decent for a Nintendo DS game, especially since every character has a unique moveset. They don't just change specials, all of their strong attacks have different properties. For instance, even though everyone has a launcher, Naruto will jump up and you can automatically follow up with a combo. But Sasuke stays on the ground, so if you want to do an air combo, you gotta jump up and follow your opponent. And one of those unlockable characters is the freaking frogs that Jiraiya uses for Sage Mode. I have never seen them as playable characters. And there's one more game mode which is the special missions. Each character has a bingo book and each mission gives you a certain number of stamps. Once you fill up a line or the entire thing, the character gets a new ability. And this ability is something you can replace with your current jutsu on the touch screen. These abilities can be new jutsu or simply buffs. So there's even some character customization here. The missions have some special conditions, sometimes you need to 
defeat an opponent without using normal attacks, sometimes you gotta collect items, sometimes you gotta survive in a pitch black stage. There are some cool game modes here, but honestly not enough variety for the number of missions and characters the game asks you to clear. Even just doing the first character, I saw duplicate missions immediately. But if you wanna sit through the gauntlet and unlock everything, you can expect to spend hours in this game mode. But I wouldn't say it has that much content, since a lot of the missions are duplicates. I really just wanna play this game in multiplayer. Some stages are a bit lame, but the fighting system itself is so much fun. That said, a fighting game like this needs a practice mode, where we can explore the full potential of each character, and maybe even try out different builds. That's something I definitely missed with this title. And although I love that each character plays differently, you can definitely feel that some are just more powerful than others. Not sure how much attention went into the game balance there. I never thought I'd say this about a Ninja Council game, but I'm ranking this at C. And that's putting it above a bunch of Ultima Ninjas and a couple of Storm and Clash of Ninja games. But that's just how much I liked it. This game is a little jam that perhaps didn't get the recognition it deserved. And after that nice surprise, it's time for disappointment. We'll be right back. Next time someone accuses me of clickbait, I'm gonna say, well, that's still not as bad as what Bandai did to the entirety of Japan. Let me break it down for you. The PlayStation 2 Ultima Ninja games were called Naruto to Hiro in Japan. That's how the first three games were called. When we get to Ultima Ninja 4, the games went from Naruto to Naruto Shippuden, and in Japan, those games changed title too. From Naruto to Hiro to Naruto to Akseru. So Ultima Ninja 4 was Akseru, and Ultima Ninja 5 was Akseru 2. So far, so good. This game we're gonna review today was called Axel 3, in Japan, which would be the same as calling it Ultima Ninja 6 over here in the West. But let me tell you, this is not a sequel to Ultima Ninja 5. Ultima Ninja Heroes 3 takes a lot of the Heroes 2 formula, giving you a board with different squares, each one of them with an event for you to clear in order to progress the story. So as you can clearly see, there's no open world, there's no free roaming in the combat system, even though it has some new stuff, it is not an evolution from Ultima Ninja 5. So this definitely does not feel like a sequel to that. Biggest clickbait? I have ever seen in my life. And this one costs you money. I mean, even for a sequel to Heroes 2, they cut a lot of stuff off. Because these squares are basically just battles or side-scrolling levels. The side-scrolling levels are definitely new and we'll talk more about them, but what happened to the tree-climbing minigames? Or the poses? Or the quizzes? All that stuff that was in Heroes 2 was scrapped, and progressing through these levels is actually repetitive as hell. Something that those minigames could have helped with. The side-scrolling levels feel novel at the very least, it's something we've never been able to enjoy in an Ultimate Ninja game. There are usually different objectives, sometimes you gotta defeat opponents, others you have to destroy objects, and others you just gotta get to the finish line. It's a novel concept that I appreciated for the variety it brought to these levels, because without them, it would just be a series of battles. And this game would be even more boring. But that novelty also wears out pretty fast, especially when they make you play the exact same level over and over. There actually aren't that many side-scrolling levels, the game just makes you repeat them a bunch of times. That said, this is the first time on a PSP Ultima Ninja that we're actually playing the Naruto Shippuden story. And the game covers a decent chunk of Shippuden, going from Naruto returning to the village all the way to his fight against Kakuzu. And that's when the game just couldn't resist and introduces you to a filler arc. In typical Naruto filler fashion, this group of villains has a vendetta against Konoha. And through some mysterious jutsu that they just made up on the spot, they're gonna summon a demon that looks like a tree and suck the entire village's chakra. Three villains versus the entire leaf village. And they had to resort to Naruto and Sasuke teaming up to take down the final boss. By the way, one of those villains is actually Sonic. Whoa, not bad. I'm impressed. Now it's your turn. I don't know about that. No joke, that is actually Sonic's voice actor. The entire game is voiced in Japanese and English, but for some reason, changing it to English during the filler arcs just makes it funnier for me. It eases my suffering. And to be fair, if it wasn't for this filler, we wouldn't have a single boss fight in the entire game. And you guys already know what Naruto's gonna do. He's gonna clean his clock. Yeah, I still don't know what that means. And when we finally take down the boss, we roll credits, and there's still two chapters remaining? We get to play as Sasuke now, putting his team together? We're gonna form up heavy and hunt down Itachi, aren't we? Nope, you form heavy and you play the filler again, but this time from Sasuke's perspective. And let me tell you, it doesn't change much. But then the final chapter finally has Sasuke chasing Itachi and he finds him and, and you fight. But turns out that was just a warm up. Itachi says, yeah, we'll finish this later and credits roll. What the hell just happened? They didn't even finish that arc. Why introduce it at all? Now there's a lot of fighting in this story, so we gotta talk about the battle system and how it changed. This whole game seems to have been built with a new feature in mind, a feature that unfortunately I 
wasn't able to try out, and that's co-op. Most of the missions during story mode can be played with some other player, but as you can imagine, that's not the easiest thing for me to do nowadays. That said, I think the combat system just got a lot worse thanks to this change. The controls have become clunkier, you can now run past opponents in battle, completely missing attacks, and even attack the opposite side, because the game features a lot of 2v1 and 2v2 encounters. So they made it more flexible on where you want to attack, because you might have an opponent on each side. But in this battle system, that just results in a lot of attacks going where you don't want them to go. They removed the grab, which had never been done in Ultimate Ninja, precisely because if you hold back and attack, you attack towards the opposite side. And I think that just makes the game worse. You've got even more busted hitboxes on characters like Hidan and Kakuzu, but hey, Ultimate Ninja games are party games and I've made my peace with that. There was a time that I thought they were more competitive than the Storm games. This whole journey in the ranking of Naruto games, looking back at Ultimate Ninjas, has completely changed my mind on that. But hey, not every change was bad. Every character has a unique awakening that gives them some sort of special ability. Hidan, for instance, creates a circle on the ground and can stab himself to deal damage to an opponent no matter where they are. They added a chakra dash, probably influenced by the Storm games. I don't think Ultimate Ninja needed it, but hey, it's there if you want to use it. And the ultimate animations are still excellent, especially considering this game is running on a PSP. And even though they removed Team Ultimates, you now have Link Jutsu when you're close to one of your teammates, depending on the character combination you have. But at the end of the day, it's still an Ultimate Ninja game with infinite substitutions, and that just makes it incredibly frustrating to play in higher difficulties. Because your opponent will always substitute one or two hits into the combo. And when you're outnumbered, these battles can be a nightmare. And while some of these harder battles are optional, they also unlock characters in case you want to have the full roster. Did I do those optional missions to unlock the full roster? Yeah, because me, I guess. Here's the full roster unlocked, 16 hours of playtime. To their credits, it's got some characters that I've never seen before in a Naruto game. They've got three different paths of pain, instead of the one that we're just used to. There's also this version of Kabuto, you usually only get human Kabuto or sage mode, but you don't see this half step very often. Other than that, the progression is a bit lackluster. The things you can unlock are Jutsu, if you just want to take a character and change the Jutsu they take into battle, and Tactics, which are buffs that you activate before a battle, and you're definitely gonna need those at higher difficulties. You've got some wallpapers, some still images, but compared to previous Ultimate Ninja games where you had ultimate animations, full 3D models, this is a bit lackluster. It's a major step back as far as Ultimate Ninja games go, but since we didn't get clickbaited like Japan did, the downgrade isn't as big. Still, coming from Heroes 2 that had all kinds of different events throughout the levels, I think removing those was definitely a mistake, and made the story mode an absolute drag to get through. Maybe it was better with co-op, but unfortunately it's been over 10 years since its release, and that's not something we have readily available. All in all, I think this was a bad game. We're gonna rank it at E. Not even as good as Akatsuki Rising, but given the full voice acting, ultimate animations, and the sliver of progression it has, it's still gonna rank above all of those DS games. And that's another episode of the Ranking of Naruto games. Now we have finally cleared all of the Ultimate Ninjas that were in the way of the game you guys really want to see. Ultimate Ninja Impact. That's the game we're gonna look at next episode, along with some other Ninja Council game. I don't know how they made so many of those. If you want to catch me playing Impact Live, though, I'll probably do it over on my Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Globku, the link is down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Bye!